What's going on guys, it's Zach from WeaponWorks LLC. We appreciate you guys being here with us today. So in today's episode of Is It Just As Good, we're gonna take what is commonly known as the best combat shotgun on the market, the Benelli M4, and we're gonna run it against its Turkish counterpart, the Panzer Arms M4. We're gonna run these guys through a 500 round course of fire that includes birdshot and buckshot to see which one performs better. From the outside looking in, these guns are virtually identical. All of the parts are supposed to be interchangeable and I'm very interested to see if one runs as well as the other. So stay tuned towards the end of the video to find out how someone that's watching this video is going to be able to win this Panzer Arms M4 with a brand new Cerakote finish. Hope you guys enjoy the video and we'll talk soon. Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Blue from WeaponWorks LLC. And I'm Angel. So we took out this Benelli M4 and its Turkish counterpart uh, for a 500 round course of fire. We did 450 rounds of number seven birdshot and 50 rounds of double op buckshot through each of these guns. Um, most of it was uh, pretty close, like seven, 10 yards, but we worked out to like 20 yards. Did some basic walking drills and then a lot of transitions and ready ups. So um, both of these shotguns perform really well today. Um, the Panzer M4, I wanted to first start off by saying it blew all of my expectations out of the water. What about you, Angel? Yeah, definitely. I honestly thought that it would have a bunch of malfunctions or that something would break on it, like the magazine tube uh, cap coming off or something crazy like that. Um, but like Blue said, we didn't have any issues with it going down during the course of fire. Yeah, in the past, we've seen a bunch of um, a bunch of these Turkish imports come in, and none of them none of them have really looked too good. Look like they can perform very well. I've also heard of some issues from some of my customers in the past that have ran some of these imports to have uh, feeding issues and several different malfunctions, usually um, referring to the quality control of these weapons. Uh, but this M4 clone is is pretty spot on to what this Benelli to to the at least the construction and the dimensions of all the parts and stuff like that is pretty on point I'm sure there's some differences in the materials and you know manufacturing processes that the Panzer arms uh, factory has to do in comparison to the Benelli factory. Um, I know these are made uh, by Beretta. I think that's still the case and obviously Beretta has been uh, making firearms since the 1500s. One of the oldest firearms manufacturers in the world today. So it's kind of hard to compete and this gun definitely did that today. What would you say? Even down to the recoil impulse, um, how the gun operated in terms of like reloading uh, the buttons, uh, the lift gate, everything seemed to be functioning on the same level as the Benelli throughout the course of fire. Right. Only differences, I would say, the Benelli kind of had a little smoother of a recoil impulse. It, it also cycled a little faster. One thing we did notice pretty early on, the first shot string that we did with the Panzer Arms M4, the QD on the stock actually broke. I don't know if it broke or just uh, just got tore up after the first couple shots, but yeah, at the end of the day, the QDs on the stock didn't work. Work. I think that these guns take all Benelli furniture. Am I uh, mistaken on that? Or is that, no, is that I correct? think it, Yeah, so if that's the case, then the stock is a very minuscule thing to deal with. That goes into all the other accessories that we have on this Benelli. All that stuff can fit on here. So uh, just take that in consideration as well. So like Blue was saying, I also noticed that the recoil impulse was a little bit better on the Benelli but I would say it's negligible for most people. Um, honestly, I don't think most people would notice. It just returned back to your sight picture a little bit faster. But that being said, they both ran really, really smooth throughout the course of fire. Yeah, we also took these guns apart too. Um, after we shot them, we inspected how the internals were looking and stuff like that. The only differences that we can see in terms of what was being done internally was some of the Benelli components have uh, some sort of really high quality finish, some sort of phosphate or nitride and something like that. 
like that. And then in the Panzer arm, it's just the regular steel with more of like a chrome polish style finish. I'm assuming just to make it so it's a little easier to clean or so the gas, when it goes through the piston system, it kind of it's kind of has like a self cleaning situation, like suppressors and stuff like that, I'm assuming. But as far as the dimensions go, uh, it was pretty hard to tell the parts apart in the Panzer Arms and the Benelli. It honestly looked like you could uh, interchange that stuff and you'll probably have it running going. Uh, malfunction wise, there were zero malfunctions across the board. The only issues that we ran into were just the ones that were revolved around the fact that we don't run shotguns at all and we're pretty uh, bad with the manual of arms for these shotguns. This is actually the first time I personally ran any sort of shotgun in this manner. My first gun was a Mossberg 500 that I shot like a hundred times before I went to boot camp and that's pretty much all the experience I have with those. Uh, what would you say about that? Yeah, I, I um, also have to say that I don't have a lot of time on shotguns besides like bird hunting. Um, so shooting these like up close and fast was a lot different. One minor difference cosmetically was the charging handle. On the Benelli it has a really nice rounded one and it's like a little bit skinnier on this but function wise it worked the same as it did on the Benelli. Um, we also had an optic on the Benelli for the whole course of fire uh, and we did not on the Turkish gun but they functioned the same because of the ranges we were shooting at them. We can see that there is a rail in the same yep. spot as as the Benelli. If we wanted, we could have put a hollow sign on here, but we're giving this gun away, so we didn't want to, you know, outfit it for just for the test or anything like that. This is our Benelli is going to stay here at Weapon Works for the duration that we are a company most likely so is is just got a bunch of upgrades that we put on the gun over the past couple years that we had it the capacity on these guns were different so you might notice that in the videos as far as the performance they these guns really like the especially buckshot i don't know what it was but when we loaded these guns up with buckshot it felt at home basically yeah. it felt like that's what it wanted. It was really smooth. You can tell that the shot pattern itself was on point. There was one build drill I did that was completely out of control and I only missed like two pellets uh, <laughs> during the uh, string of fire. So that was very impressive to say the least. Yeah, we also ran several build drills through each gun, me, Blue, and the owner, Zach. Um, and compared the times on them, and the difference was negligible uh, between both. Um, so even though we did say we felt a slight difference in the Benelli, uh, both guns ran uh, to the same speed. The differences, like Angel said, were very minuscule. I mean, after shooting both these guns side by side, it's honestly very hard to justify spending you know, all this money on this Benelli. I know the legacy, the popularity, and the, um, the clout, yeah, the clout and reputation that comes uh, from the performance of the shotgun in the past, but there's other options like the 1301 that we really love here at Weapon Works. Also, you know, Benelli clones now, since the patent is expired, it'll be hard to say that, uh, this this $500 Panzer Arm shotgun isn't well worth the money. I think the Benelli is still worth the amount of money, but you can't deny that for the amount of money you're spending, um, that, that Turkish gun is a, is a better deal, especially if you're like most people and aren't gonna be shooting high, high round counts through it. Yeah, it still has a place. These round counts could possibly get up there, and if that's the case for you, then obviously you need to get the Benelli. But if you're getting, if you just want something that's uh, going to protect your household with, that's going to give you essentially the same um, 
same manual of arms and the same performance up to a certain degree, uh, you wouldn't be go you wouldn't be going wrong at all with the um, Panzer Arms M4, in my opinion, at least. So yeah, those are our final thoughts on uh, these two guns. If you guys have any questions, just give us a call or come check us out at 1433 University Drive in Burlington, North Carolina. Thank you. If you have any questions about these firearms or anything firearms related, you can come see us at 1433 University Drive, Burlington, North Carolina. Thank you.